Metroid Prime is remembered as one of the most brilliant of all GameCube games. But before we get to it, we have to talk about its sequel, Echoes. The Divinity 50 with your host, Nooms. Metroid Prime 2 follows Samus on a mission to rescue a group of Federation Marines on a planet known as Aether. With Aran's luck being what it is, the mission quickly goes wrong. Samus is forced to crash land on Aether, where she is lured into a poisonous alternate dimension and has much of her famous power suit's best abilities stolen. From there, Samus is recruited by the great Luminoth race to retrieve the energy source which has kept their planet alive, but was recently captured by the nightmarish Ing race that dwells in Aether's alternate dimension. Prime 2's gameplay generally functions the same as Prime's. With Samus battling alien creatures and technology from a first person perspective, seeking out the scattered abilities of her suit, and endeavoring to unlock new areas in the process. The thing is, Echoes gets it all a little wrong. Where Prime is lush and full of wonder, Echoes is generally drab and dark. With Dark Aether's areas being so dim, it's even hard to navigate sometimes. A late game fetch quest also unnecessarily drags down the experience. Most frustratingly, environments are just complex enough to be tiring rather than challenging during exploration. I chalk this one up to the added complexity in interweaving Aether's dual dimensions. Knowing when and where to move between the two during legwork intensive missions is just too much. Prime 2 succeeds in large part thanks to everything it did manage to carry over from its predecessor. The controls are still smart, action is fast and intense, the bosses are huge, and the puzzles are challenging and satisfying. While Samus's abilities remain largely unchanged from Prime, her new beams and visors do add some nice variety. The scan visor returns and remains as important as ever, but the dark and echo visors are all new. The dark visor makes spotting interdimensional beings possible, while the echo visor allows Samus to locate otherwise invisible sound producing objects. The new light and dark beams each counter enemies of the opposing dimension and add ammo counts to the mix, increasing demand for strategic battling. Surprisingly, Echoes also includes a competitive multiplayer component, the first Metroid game to have one. This is a fairly basic setup with just two modes and six arenas to choose from. Prime 2 certainly wouldn't be an obvious go-to for multiplayer action on the GameCube, but what's there is enjoyable even if it is a little unnecessary. When it comes to the multiplayer, you get the sense that too much was asked of the Metroid series with Echoes. Nintendo seemed to want to counter Halo 2's release, which was around the same time as Echoes, but that's just not the kind of series Metroid is. Metroid Prime 2 definitely demands to stand with the other two entries in the Prime series. It's just the weakest of the three. Let me know what you think of Metroid Prime and the Definitive 50 in the comment section below. Don't forget to rate and subscribe. Check back next week for entry number 7 on the Definitive 50 GameCube Games.